Okay, here's a story that's called Kamikaze Cow. It has to do with a little operation out on a ranch that they call it the switch. And it happens when you've got one cow a little short of milk or a calf, is, uh, you've got to separate a set of twins or something of this nature. And it's called the switch. And that's what this story is about. It was back in the spring of 83. There was Ed and Warner and me. See, it was cabin time out of the old S. B. ranch. Now, Ed, the boss, he was an ornery old cuss with a bark, just as bad as his bite. Sure didn't seem to help his disposition none with the heifers all cabin at night. Now, me and Warner's doing the riding, and, well, things is going okay. That is until we ran in that old bag up there on that ridge that day. You see, this old girl was cabin, but just not having no luck. Her calf's all tangled and dead and stuck. Well, it would have been just a normal working day cowboy thing, except for the old cow that was. That old girl was a witch on wheels. Not kamikaze, Warner said with an oath. Well, she just turned around and gave a hook at us both. You see, kamikaze was what we'd named her old hype. She just loved beating on cowboys. She didn't even seem to care if she died. Well, I shook out a loop. Well, let's get her done. Why, making her hurt might even be fun. But Warner, being older and wiser than I, got a little twinkle there in one eye. He said, you know, that old girl's disposition is just a whole bunch like Ed's. Maybe we ought to trail her on into the shed. We can jerk out that calf, kick her into the dries, and she'll go to the auction. We'll have finally kissed her goodbye. So off the ridge we came. We're carrying the mail. Kamikaze's in the lead with a nine in her tail. Well, she gets the barn, clears the top pole, smashes three gates as she's definitely on a roll. But then she comes around this one corner and just irons out old Ed. But then she made a silly mistake. The old girl ran right in the shed. Well, I got there first and slammed shut the door. We got her now. Yep, she's captured for sure. Well, Ed had swallowed his snooze, and then she'd stepped in his hat. It sure didn't help his outlook, I'll tell you that. It's a dang wonder that I ain't dead. What's that blankety-blank thing doing in my shed? I thought you was cowboys, so why the chains? I thought you are supposed to keep care of all that stuff out in the range. Um, it's hard to reason with a fellow like Ed. But Warner explained that, well, the calf was dead, and we figured this was going to be our one chance to get that old girl plumb off of the ranch. What? The calf is dead? Ed slowly spoke. I know what he was thinking. You can always smell smoke. Well, it would sure be an awful shame to see all that milk go to waste. Maybe I should go get the orphan and give him a taste. You see, he had this bum calf with which he'd been fussing with the Jim Beam bottle and just a whole bunch of cussing. That little feller had the old boy in a fuss, his maternal traits being low like he was. Well, I just throwed my head back and I laughed. You ain't never going to get her to take that calf. That head of hers ain't got nothing in it. She'll stomp him. It won't take a minute. You don't think I can, the old timer asks. I got this trick that I learned from John Bass. You boys get the calf pulled out of that witch, I'll get the orphan, and we'll make the switch. I told you we should have roped her up in the trees. If we're living by sundown, it'll be surprising to me. But Warner got his rope, and I got the chains. We slipped on into the barn, stayed out of range. Well, now the sight of that critter may, would have made the devil go pale. She's backed into a corner there, wringing her tail and a bawling and a pawing and a throwing up dirt. Why, just the thought of that scene makes my old body hurt. She's got two beady eyes, both of them red. Looks like they're coming out of one hole right in the middle of her head. Well, she's got a big Roman nose with an underslung snout with a mouth that's turned down and a permanent pout. Well, one horn's been bust off it, hung down by her ear, but the other stood straight up, just like a yearling reindeer. Well, we're backed into a corner there, a plot in her feet. Warner says, yeah, I can catch her all right, but, but, uh, but I'm going to need you for bait. Oh, well, I'm not too swift at thinking I'm slow. But there's a hole in this plan I want you to know, because what if your loop don't find her head? What do you think my mama's going to say when she finds out I'm dead? Well, I tell you, I'm tougher than nails, but I'm sorry to say there ain't no brains on my resume. So I enters that pen, just like Gene Autry I strode. My chest was puffed out like a stomped on toad. A bard is setting up there on the gate, his loop by his side, just lying in wait. He's got his toes wrapped around the top rail tight. Don't worry, boy, I'll get her all right. <coughs> Well, I was halfway to her when she made her run. 
Dang, but she sure was a quick old son of a gun. Zero to sixty in three seconds flat. No time for visiting, I'll tell you that. So I turned on my heel on a run for the trap. The hula hand flies and I heard her at snap. Warner started ground dilates around this old post. I'll tell you, my knees was shaking. I was just as white as a ghost. Well, with my bard in the front to pull the slack. I takes the change, and I goes to the back. Without trying to catch a crazy kangaroo on a trampoline would have been easier caught than her. But somehow I managed, amidst the fury of the flying feet and the fur. Now the feet was hers, and the fur was all mine, not really a real good kind of trade. Why, I must have lost at least a pound of hide with every jump that she made, but that old girl just would not give no slack. She'd buck around in an arc and go till she had fence, and I'd lose a little more bark. But you see, I had this death grip on her tail, and I was trying to ignore the pain. Right, we just come around, hit this one side of the fence, we'll come right around and do it all over again. Well, I tell you, after eight or ten laps of that, it's beginning to get me down. I thought, but maybe I should go back to college, you know, take an inside job in town. But then she stopped right dead in her tracks and set up fast and hard and cast her two beady eyes right on my faithful part. Well, his face was just as red as a spank baby bottom. I hadn't noticed there as we fought, but he just had a hook left there on that dally post. He was actually just hanging on hard to the knot. I took advantage of the lull before she changed direction to perform a kamikaze obstetrical inspection. Yes, our diagnosis proved correct. Yep, her baby was a gone. I got the legs untangled, got the chains put on her. The calf was coming fine. She's backed up tight against the rope just like I knew she went back. Maybe she really wasn't helping much. And then, oh, dang, dang the cowboy luck. Yeah, you guess it. The dad burned hips got stuck. Well, I put a boot up about her against her tail. It's a method that's been proven. But she almost filled my pant leg when her bowels started moving. The extra leverage really helped. The calf is coming now for sure. And then old Ed stuck his ugly puss inside the old barn door. Well, he's got this orphan calf curled in his left arm tight. And his cold cur dog Shorty he's dragging up on the right. Now Shorty's disposition is just exactly like his boss. I think he's a blue healer, badger kind of cross. Really now, folks, everything that happened next is really just a blur. Because Kamikaze lit into Shorty, Shorty tied into her, but this time she didn't stop. Nope, the Hondu just wouldn't hold her, and she darn near ripped the arms right out of Warner's shoulder. Well, I landed flat in my back amidst the slime and the gore with the dead calf laying on my chest. Ed slipped back out the door. Well, <clears throat> my partner quickly jumped down off the, the gate and opened up a pen. He reckoned he could save my life if he could say drag me in. But by now they were on their second lap and he just didn't have much time and he ended up getting the calf sign leg instead of getting Mike. Well, my air was gone, I couldn't move. Now Shorty'd had enough. He ran right between Warner's legs. Kamikaze was just too tough. Of course, that had not meant that Warner had to slam the old gate just to save his own skin. Well, that left me and that Kamikaze cow alone there in that pen. Well, now, she's a starting out in her victory lap. And I'm a staring at that horn. I'm starting to think about shish kebabs. Angels, the day that I was born. Then, like a steaming locomotive with her head between her knees from the other end, and she's headed straight for me. Well, I turned over on my belly, got up on all fours, but I was absolutely completely tuckered right out. I mean, I just couldn't do no more. Well, now I'll swear that I heard the proverbial fat lady lift her voice in song. The final curtain falling. But by jiggers, I was wrong. That old girl got right up to me, started sniffing on the ground, and then she started licking my hind pocket like I was the cutest thing she'd ever found. Yes, that old bass trick had worked all right. That any fool could see. But in the absence of an orphan calf, the critter's claiming me. Well, now I know it's in my own best interest to go along with this silly plan. I'll just wait. I'll make my break. I mean, I'll get out when I can. But then she shoved me back to the dinner pail. Now that was a sight to behold. Don't think I'll ever forget that, even when I'm gray and old. Well, it was a scabby old bag, burdocks in the hair. At least two years worth of old cow manure hanging on it there. Well, now, folks, I want you to put yourself in my position. Now, tell me, what would you do if that kamikaze mama had a laid the claim on you? Well, me, I was way too tired to run. I absolutely too scared to curse. So I just closed my eyes and started in the nurse.